the top three 22s of all time. The Ruger 1022, Remington Nylon 66, and the Marlin 60. We're going to show you why these three guns made our list of the top three 22s of all time. All right, my choice is the Ruger 1022. Now, one of the greatest things that Ruger ever did was come out with this rotary magazine. They use it for a lot of different things, but this rotary magazine was actually a copy of a Savage magazine, an internal magazine. This is a detachable box magazine. However, it allows you to use a rimmed cartridge. Ruger used it in other things like their 44. They use it in some bolt rifles with rimmed cartridges because it'll, the cartridges aren't stacked on top of each other so they don't get caught on the rims. It's really hard to make a rimmed cartridge work um, in a double stack magazine. That's why this rotary magazine was the best thing that Ruger ever developed in my opinion. And that's one of the things that makes their 22 so great. The only thing about the 1022, in my opinion, that's a drawback is there's no last round hold open. And as far as I know, there's nothing that you can do to make it have a last round hold open as far as aftermarket stuff internally here. If there is, correct me if I'm wrong, but in my opinion, that's one of the big downfalls of the Ruger 1022. Okay, we're here with the Model 60. This is uh, Glenfield. Model 60, this is the older one, and it's two fed. It holds 17 rounds in the tube. The newer ones only hold 15, and they do have the last round hold open, and this one does not have the last round hold open. This one is probably about 25 years old, so let's give it a shot. Here we are with a nylon 66 22. This is the butt fed one. They are called the tube fed. It's kind of a different design Remington did with this. So it gives it a more sleek design in the front. It does hold 15 with one in it. So that's five more on a 10 22. Catch a lot of my buddies with that I do. So they like their 10 round mags, the rotary mags cool. This thing holds 15. Yeah, the Marlin 60 does hold 17. That's the little longer gun. These guns were made, started being developed in 52. They came out in 59. And the Xylite, Xylite, however you pronounce that, and it was too big of a word to put on the gun. So they called it nylon, because that's basically what the Xylite is. Nylon, plastic. It's all about the same thing, guys. But this stock is guaranteed for life. Even though this gun's old, send it to Remington. They will give you a new stock. They've got some still in, in stock for this purpose. So there's different colors. They had these in a bolt action. They had them in a lever action. They had them in the magazine fed, which was the 77 instead of the 66. This gun came in all kinds of configurations. The way this gun was designed was the nylon. There's metal parts moving in here, but it runs on the, the nylon. And you really didn't have to oil them. You do, but you didn't have to keep things from wearing out. They were just a good gun back in the day. They were cheap. Remington didn't really have anything to run in the market. There was Savage and Marlin had some decent 22s that were cheaper than Remington because they just had miniature copies of their big bore rifles so they needed something to come into the market and that's when they designed a plastic gun to keep away the price of the wood down so let's give this little girl a whirl
what else can you say? Now, on the Ruger 1022, when it comes from the factory, in order to release the bolt, you have to press this little doodad down here, and that, and then hold the bolt back, and that would help you, let you release the bolt. It's kind of hard to work. So what I did is there's an aftermarket part you can buy that you put inside the trigger group, which will allow you to just release it like many other guns. So that's an upgrade I have on this 1022, is that little part inside there that allows you to just release the bolt, which is great. Um, that's something that, it should come that way, Ruger should make it that way. Uh, I don't know if it's not that way for safety reasons or whatever, but it's much better that way. It's kind of annoying to need to use two hands for something that you only need one hand for. So let's put another 10 through it. They function flawlessly. This is the Marlin 60. This is the old, older one. This is from Glenfield. I recommend if you buy want a Marlin, you buy the older ones, not the newer ones. And just put another 17 rounds through it. The old ones, they run everything. Yep, you've seen the 60 and the 1022. They like them. These guns, one of the big things that they used these for, and they really liked them, was up in the far north where it's cold, oils do stick, and that Marlin 60, if you guys ever get a hold of one, a lot of them in the side right here, they got a squirrel and stuff in them. They were squirrel guns, guys. They get them oiled up, and it gets pretty cold up there, guys. They can malfunction when it's cold. The Nylon 66, she will run with no oil. That's why they liked them. All right, this is the Ruger 1022. Now, this has a nice wood stock on it. I like wood. This gun can come in a hundred configurations. Um, if you just get a basic wood one like this, this is a newer gun, um, you're looking at on sale about $199, regular price about $249, depending on where you buy it at. Um, the price on this has always been quite a bit higher than any other 22. Uh, the Marlin Model 60, that was my first rifle. My parents walked into a coast to coast store put down $69, no paperwork required, and walked out with it in the 80s. That was my first rifle. Um, the Remington Nylon 66, that could be had for about 59 bucks. Kmart had them at the end. It was an exclusive to Kmart only at the end. But originally, you could buy them in any store. Um, the Marlin Model 60 used to be a very good quality gun. The newer ones, not so much. So if you're looking for a Model 60, I'd find one of the older ones with the scrolling and the squirrel or whatever. Uh, those were nice guns, but the newer ones, you're going to want to stay away from it. That's one thing with the 1022, is while a lot of things have changed over the years internally, uh, and then this has a plastic barrel band and some other things, the function has never fallen off like some of the other 22s. You go buy a new 22, you can't get five rounds through it without a malfunction. Unless you're buying a Ruger or a Browning or a CZ or some high-end gun. Um, as far as the Mar Marlin Model 60, the new ones suck. And the Remington Nylon, they don't make those anymore. So if you're looking for a quality 22 at a fair price, uh, this is gonna be your best bet. I'd go with the Ruger or higher. In my opinion, the only thing that makes the Ruger better than the Nylon 66 or the Marlin Model 60 is the aftermarket support. This here is a pawn shop gun. It was a relatively newer 1022, but I got it to put some aftermarket goodies on it. ATI folding stock, adjustable folding stock. Why? because a guy can. It's cool, really cheap to shoot, and it's fun, guys. 
The aftermarket ability of 1022 is just unbelievable. This is just one stock a guy can get. There's many others out there, everybody. That's the 1022 in action. Always flawless with pretty much any ammo. Now, you don't want to shoot shorts or subsonics because they don't like those real well, but uh, any other type of ammo, it'll take pretty much anything. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate the speed lure that they make for the Model 60. Just take the tube out, set it aside, you can take the speed loader, and you just turn it so it's open. And then you just t tilt the barrel like this. And you just let them fall in. Set it inside. And then you just put the tube back in and you're all ready to go. So, if you want toys, the 1022 guys, the add-ons, the stocks, you can get these things with bayonets and all kinds of things, guys. They got magazines for these things. They got 50 round drums. I think there's even 100 round drum for these things. All kinds of trigger things. You can drop these down to pound and a half trigger. Real simple, take stock off, two pins, trigger group falls out, slide another one in. There's a bazillion of add-ons. Is it my favorite? No, but I do like adding toys. Too many options, not enough money. Well, you've seen us shoot. You've seen these guns run flawlessly, but this is my baby. This is my favorite. The nostalgia with this gun is hard to beat, guys. The 1022 is my favorite. At this price point, um, it's a great gun for its price point. It might be a little high to some people. There is a lot cheaper out there, like we said, some Mossbergs and some cheaper Marlins and things like that. But nothing's going to function this great at this price point. And you can go up on, I've seen 22s for $1,000 if you want to go up to a Browning or something. But at this price point, the Ruger really can't be beat. And it's got an older look with the wood. That's why it's my favorite. This is a Marlin 60. This is my favorite, and it's the older Model 60, the Glenfield model, and it holds 17. And this is mine, but there's not much aftermarket support, so but it's still my favorite. If you want to add some toys, here you go, guys. 1022. It's not the favorite, but if you're adding toys, guys, it's the one to go to.